I'll take it all. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. He is worthy. How are you feeling? Yes. Good and yang. And storms of life come. They shut and say. Okay? I got something for you. Yeah. Yeah. First Peter 5.10 But the grace of all... But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Say perfect. perfect. Establish. Say establish. Strengthen, Strengthen and settle you. And settle you. And settle. What does God do? I don't want your theology. I want what the word says. After you have suffered a little while, God strengthens you, establishes you, settles you, and makes you perfect. Storms come, they don't stay. Struggles come, they don't stay. Well, what defines the timeline, right? Weeping may endure for the night, but joy come in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's morning. Yes. Hallelujah. You want to know why we suffer and suffer? Because whatsoever a man thinketh, mm -hmm. that he become. Come on. I will not hold this back to you, because if you were to get what the Word of God says, man, your life can just turn around in it quicker than you would ever believe. Quicker than you'd ever believe. Quicker than you'd ever believe. I forgot I smoked. I forgot I drank. You know what the first thing the Lord ever told me? First, stop taking depression medicine. I am your great physician. Amen. Stop going to those counselors. I am your counselor. Open that book. I will set you free. Yes. Do you believe? Amen. And all I said was yes. You want to know the key to being saying free? Say yes. Yes. Accept the grace. You cannot walk in divine forgiveness and not walk in divine transformation. Are you the same as you were before you got saved? That's really a question for, I think, maybe your friends and family about you. We all say no. Everyone's going to say no. I ask for hands. They're all going to say no. What do your coworkers say? What does your family say? What do your friends say? Are you different? You ought to be. Amen. You ought to be. Behold, all things are made new. Amen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Man, I got. It. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Yes. I don't want American theology. My Bible said all. I can't remember my life before I got saved. I can't. Oh, well, that's not true, you know, because I struggle. Don't let life speak louder to you than the Word of God. Don't let someone's shortcomings speak louder to you than the Word of God. Don't you judge your salvation based on the salvation of others or what they say they have. Because you will limit, you will raise your bar to their faults. Yeah. That's not the gospel. Man is not your Savior. Mm -hmm. right. Pills are not your Savior. Death is not your Savior. Man, you know, I'm just waiting to go to heaven. We have this covenant of, with death in America. Death has become our Savior because we've been, we believe that it only gets better in heaven. Christ died for heaven again in you. Christ died for you to be born again, to live a holy life, to be free, to stop saying because he has Amen. no dominion over you unless you give it to him. Amen. You have to give it to him. But why would you? Because I have Jesus. Amen. The man who set me free, the man who delivered me, yeah. gave me a purpose, a calling. He's blessed my money. He's blessed my marriage. He's blessed my health. And I have all this. I've seen signs and wonders. I've been used. Yeah. Why on earth would I go back to go like that? I can't remember because I put in the sea of forgetfulness too. Amen. 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 This is for all who believe. All who believe. Amen. I can go back to muck and mire whenever I want. I don't want to. Amen. Amen. We read Hebrews 6. We get scared. That is not that is not your place, man. Yeah, well, how many of you know, you know, if you fall away? It's in the Bible. It's not like a verse to base your life over. Get it? I'm gonna base my life around this that when I fall away, I ain't coming back. I don't think so. You know what I base my life around? The man who built his house on the rock will not be shaken. Amen. Amen. You know what I base my life around? Hebrews 2.14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Yes. 
That's what I go. You want to know what I build my life around? First uh, John 3, 8 to 9. Uh, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil is sent from the beginning here. For this purpose the Son of God is manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. No. How many know you all struggle? Dude, not me. I do not struggle with the bottle. Dude, I don't struggle with habitual sin. Do we all trip? Here's, you know, here's the key, and you need to get this. This isn't an option. How many of you know we all stumble? Mm -hmm. Okay, why does grace cover this if it doesn't happen, right? How many know we all stumble? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that. That's a human, man. Uh, Hebrew, because I, I got like... <laughs> Hebrews 10, 26, 27. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Willful, habitual sin is not under grace. Okay, but you know, I stumble every day. Uh, this is now, see, you know, you had me, and now I kind of feel like this is law. God gave me a word. He said, Ryan, you know, ask him how to deliver, of course. My grace doesn't cover what's not mine. My grace does not cover what is not mine. You see, Ryan, if you're of me, you will not willfully sin. If you are of me, you will not keep that habitual sin. It's impossible. Why? Because the whole package of grace, which you either accept all or none, will deliver you from that thing, man. Amen. It will empower you to kick that thing to the curb. It will destroy it right from the roots. Rip it up. He will restore to you what the locust is eating. It's more, man. It is more. It is more. It is more. He will raise you up, man. Let's ditch American Christianity. Let's get real. Who wants to be set free? The grace of God is available to you. The invitation, the invitation is not just come and maybe, and maybe you know, I'll get saved. The invitation is come and see for yourself. Come and behold for the glory of the Lord is revealed to all the earth. Come and witness for yourself. Come and see for yourself. Come and partake for yourself. He is not hiding. Amen. If he was hiding, he shouldn't have sent me. Because I will tell you, this is for all who believe, man. You no longer have to live in defeat. You no longer have to live in struggle. You no longer have to struggle with sin. Your battles are the battles of the Lord's. But when you stress, they're no longer the battle of the Lord's. They are yours. And you will lose every single time. When you live under the law, you will lose every single time. But I have good news. You don't have to. God's grace is sufficient, man. God's grace is sufficient, man. And it's for everyone. It is for everyone. It is the very power of this. Being born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, man. Being under God's grace to live above and not beneath. To be the head and not the tail. In all things. All things are important to God. All things are important to God and they're important to me too. What's that mean? Spiritually. Physically. Mind, body, and soul. Marriage. Money. Health. Home. Relationships with your family. Relationships with your friend. They're all going to get saved. Do you believe it? Yes. <laughs> Oh, you know, that sounds right. Okay, well then tell me God's grace isn't sufficient for them. If you don't believe for your friend's salvation, tell me. Just tell me you don't believe. I would love to pray for you. I would love to lay hands on you. We can, we can beat this thing, family. We can beat this thing. We can enjoy the life that God created us to live. That's grace. That is grace. And if, you know, maybe um, you were walking this thing out, you know? Maybe um, you were really on track, and you were on fire, and, and you weren't even thinking about going the other way. But things happened, and you went the other way. Maybe you fell away. You know, maybe people know it. Most time, though, if I'm being honest, people don't know it. <laughs> people don't know it. We're really good at emotions, right? I can't tell you. You see, I can't tell you. I can't even tell you. In fact, as I'm preaching, as I'm reading this whole sermon, man, all I can see is this ginormous mirror. Like right in front of me. It's for me too. I ain't exempt. You know. So maybe um, um, you know, you've you've fallen away is what I'm saying. Real quick, I got like four minutes. Um Revelation 3, 15, 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would rather you be cold or hot, so that because you are lukewarm and not cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. 
unless you repent. What's God's grace for them, man? God's grace is this. God's grace is this. He's holding out his arms for you. He is waiting. God wishes that all would come to repentance. He didn't send his son for a specific few. For all whoever believes. He sent his son on the cross to die for you, man. You can be free today. You can come back. Man, no matter what sin you committed, no matter what you've done, you are never too far gone. There is time. There is grace. And there is room for you at the foot of the cross. There is a room for you in heaven. All you need to do is say, yes, I want to occupy it. Yes, Lord, I'm yours. Yes, Lord, I come back, Father. I am yours. Stand with me. It is not too late, man. It is not too late. I promise you it's not too late. If you're not even saved, it is not too late. But know this. Time is running out. And I wish I could show you the clock, but I can't. I wish I knew the clock, but I can't. But I will tell you this. God's grace is so sufficient, man. You no longer have to struggle with sin. You no longer have to live with your sin. You no longer have to live with your depression, your addiction to drugs, your suicidal thoughts. God will come. God will deliver, empower, and restore. I had so much, man. I wish I could get to it all. If you know the Lord, but you have fallen away, I'm just going to say it one more time because He is worthy. There is room for you at the cross. His grace is sufficient for you. You can come back, but if you don't, you are in a very, very dangerous zone. Very dangerous zone. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to come to heaven. I want everyone to come to heaven. Amen. For those that don't believe, He is here for you with open arms. For those of you who have backslidden, He is here with you, here waiting with open arms. So if you want to repent, if you want to accept the Lord for the first time, whatever your case, I'm just a delivery guy. Pray this with me. Father, Father, forgive me of my sins. Me of my sins. I, know I know you rose Jesus from the dead. I know He's the Son of God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me born again. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for making me strong. Thank you for loving me. I love you. My life is yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. Appreciate the word. Amen. You rightly divide the word of truth. It's a great message. And I hope we all take something out of it to our hearts. Grow by it. And uh, we can see the growth in you. And we're uh, excited for you. And uh, we know that uh, by their fruit we shall know them. We know you love the Lord with all your heart. And you're, you're filled with faith. And we encourage you to stay the course. Amen.